So move on to the respiratory lectures now. The first will be spirometry. Again, a reminder, the format of these talks will go through uh, the talks in order. There's a little bit of built knowledge in them. We'll deal with the questions and the way they're asked. We'll talk about the background information that's required to answer the questions and hopefully run through a correct model answer. The way in which questions are asked for respiratory are not too varied. This is a very, sorry, spirometry. This is a very straightforward uh, type of question. This should be the proverbial uh, points giveaway. For example, uh, you can be asked to draw a diagram that demonstrates components of total lung volume, and you can choose to draw that in whichever way uh, you see fit, but there's one diagram here that everyone knows and explains all of the types of questions very well. You're asked about uh, in an adult, what are the typical volumes of the various components of the lung volumes? You can be asked which lung volumes are measured in ED. You can be also be asked about the relationship between various volumes. And again, if you draw the right diagram, you can explain all that on the way through and negate the rest of your questions. Again, the diagram that we're after has a format, and we talk about a volume, and we talk about a time period, a set of axes. So what happens in this volume, uh, this set of axes, we're going to call a few volumes to find numbers. We know that if we hook a person up to a spirometer, an apparatus that measures how much volume they breathe in and out, we can get this type of tracing. And we ask them to take a deep breath in, and we ask them to exhale that entire breath as far as they can, and then go back to breathing normally, we end up with this type of trace. And so we end up with an oscillating volume. If we reference the lung as the source of volume. The surrogate here is that we're measuring it in a spirometer. If we do that, we're not taking into account oxygen and con concentrations of oxygen and CO2, and therefore this volume has a slope. But here we're referencing the lung. So experimentally, this is the lung. Now, we're going to define a few simple features on this. From zero, to the top is total lung volume. If we talk about an adult male, it's roughly seven litres. So that's total lung volume, total lung capacity. We also know that if we have a person breathing just comfortably as you sit there, or maybe not, coming up on your physiology exams, we talk about a tidal volume. Just breathing comfortably in and out, the lung volume changes roughly in the amount of 500 mils. If you can't remember this, work out what the dial on the ventilator does. There's your number. Now, having a tidal volume sit in between total lung volume very clearly defines a few other features on this curve. If we take this value, it's your inspiratory reserve. It's how much inspiration you have in reserve above your type of volume. Inspiratory reserve volume. Likewise, you can take this volume. Just on this diagram, I'm going to drop that zero further. You can define an expiratory volume. or an expiratory reserve volume. Again, in relation to the lung. What we can also talk about now is the difference between as far as someone can exhale out and the total zero volume of the lung. This is called residual volume. And what we talk about here 
is below tidal volume and the zero on the line, is residual capacity, or FRC, functional residual capacity. That's what we can use. So rough figures. Oh, there's one more to add, sorry. Is this volume in here. We use that for our vitality. That's all that we can muster by breathing fully in and fully out. It's our vital capacity. It's for our vitality. And those volumes are what defines spirometry. And so you can see clearly the total lung volume that begins here is made up of the sum of inspiratory reserve, expiratory reserve, and total volume. You can see that vital capacity plus residual capacity is total lung volume, total lung capacity. You can see that FRC and total volume and inspiratory reserve make up total lung capacity. So these are values that are often spoken about. This is how you define them. And in drawing this, you can very easily mark these things as you go. It's a very straightforward question. Uh, to fill in some volumes, our uh, vital capacity, most people can muster about five litres. Uh, the FRC is approximately 2.5 litres, depending on the lung. The residual volume can be about uh, 1.8 litres. And have some numbers in your head. They vary textbook to textbook. If you're in having difficulty, remember the ventilator settings that you've used before. Other uh, so you can be asked about these in the exam. Other things that we use, we can measure in ED are not so intuitive. Obviously this one, we find on the ventilator. Use the settings. Residual volume, how much capacity is left in the lung after we exhale fully, is difficult to measure and can't be done in the ED. If you don't know residual volume, you don't know FRC. If you don't know residual volume, you don't know total lung volume. These have to be experimental things that work out. Uh, we derive things from this as well if we start looking at slopes. So changing volume per unit time. We can look at FEV1. Everyone knows this for asthma, forced expiratory volume. What we're after here is the slope of this portion of the curve if we exhale fully and rapidly, as forcefully as possible. So this will become our FEV1. And we can have tidal volume, uh, our forced vital capacity would be our vital capacity if we do it as forcefully as possible. And that's the other thing that's measured when we start to talk about asthma. So it just implies a time constant on this, it implies a forcefulness to it. Alright, we'll go on and answer a question. During the procedure, he becomes hypoxic and requires assisted ventilation. We will now move to physiology. Draw a diagram that demonstrates the components of total lung volume. So total lung volume can be measured in a patient breathing on a spirometer where we measure normal quiet ventilation, large inspiratory, expiratory ventilation, back to normal quiet breathing over time. <clears throat> this quiet period of normal ventilation is called tidal volume, and it's approximately 500 mils. Tidal volume is one of the components of total lung volume. If we start at zero, we end at roughly seven, the total lung volume. Tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve added to expiratory reserve and residual volume makes up total lung volume. Likewise, 
we can have a vital capacity, approximately five litres, plus residual volume. That makes up our total load volume. Next part of the question is, in an adult, what are the typical volumes of these components? So we've mentioned total lung volume already. We've mentioned a tidal volume. We've mentioned a residual volume, and that's roughly 1.8 litres. We mentioned a functional residual capacity as well, which is roughly 2.5 litres. Which lung volumes can be measured in the ED? Lung volumes measurable in the ED on this diagram are the tidal volume. If we have someone on a ventilator, we can determine that or measure it. And then the derivatives of these values, such as FEV1 and forced vital capacity. 